my name is Michael Knowles. Uh, as is probably obvious, I like working with Lego. And uh, unfortunately, it doesn't pay the bills real well. So I, during the day, I work for a medical technology company. Is my microphone on? Yes. Oh. Okay. I'll try to adjust that a bit. And I was talking with my boss a bit ago about wanting to speak at technical conferences. I'm not sure if this is exactly what he had in mind, but, but here, here I am. Uh, and when I moved out of home with my parents when I was a kid, I really liked Lego. And I did as a lot of people do, is they move out and they put all the Lego blocks in a tub and they get their parents' problem to store. <laughs> Many years later, I decided I was grown up enough to, to have them and brought the Legos over and had a, a Lego party with, with some other adult friends of mine. I was just playing with parts and eventually just kind of a shape took form. I was, wasn't really knowing what I was building, but it was starting to look like something. And this was the result. And I was pretty happy with it. Uh, took a couple pictures and didn't think of it too much, but it started to take on a life of its own. A picture of this ended up in Wired Magazine, it ended up in the Journal of Nature, even ended up in a, a church magazine about the dangers of science playing God. <laughs> <laughs> so I had some fun with that. and uh, Didn't do much more with it for a bit, and then later on started to play with my Lego a bit more and make uh, some two-dimensional pictures. They call them Lego mosaics, but they're not really true mosaics. It just tends to be the, the term that people use with those. And Lego mosaics, designing them are fairly easy. There's a whole bunch of programs out to do them, but essentially you take whatever image you're wanting to do, resize it down to the number of pixels you want. So this one was 96 by 192, I think. You just resize the image down, and then you're doing a color match. So you have a picture just find the nearest color, just had a few in here, but they, a lot of people do pictures of faces and things as well. And can make something kind of of any size you want. And pictures are fun, but I actually wanted to do sculptures, do something 3D. And as much as there was lots of software to help me with this, there was nothing I could find for, for 3D. So this is sort of what I put about, about making, was wanting to build a tool that could take an arbitrary object, this lotus flower here, and decide how big I wanted it to be. So maybe I want this to be 100 Lego plates tall. And then it would calculate out how big the actual array should be. So if it was 100 plates high, it might be 100 by 100 uh, wide, roughly what this made it easy math for me. So it would make a million Lego plates. It would move that in, in kind of virtual space, move that lotus flower on top of all of the, the Lego blocks and look for its intersections. So find collisions between the flower and the the array of blocks, and delete everything else. And essentially, we'd have this with no colors yet, but I would have, have a lotus flower, or whatever it is I'm wanting to do. Um, finding nearest color was actually harder than I thought at first. I figured it would just be, you know, find your three different color points, your RGB, and, and go as closest. But I discovered in this that Wikipedia is actually just this font of algorithms. and. Um, it was fantastic. This one is an algorithm I don't understand at all, <laughs> but it was very functional for me. And it was actually a lot better than doing it what I thought would be the easy way. Um, and this would let me to pick what colors I wanted to choose from, from the Lego spectrum. And it would, inside each block in the three-dimensional object, it would just kind of find the average color value that was in that block, take the average color value, and look for the nearest fit. So now we have a whole bunch of plates with lots of colors. But Lego blocks come in different sizes. So what I would do at that point is you have all these plates, these little tiny ones, well, I'll colorize. Anytime there were three of those colors right on top of each other, swap that out for, for an actual brick. So we can actually, on larger parts that have similar color, we could use bigger parts. Which gives us then a bunch of Lego blocks in, in memory. But doesn't actually work into instruction booklets. So there are Lego CAD programs out there that will let you zoom through your, your object as long as you mark steps, which are essentially pages in your instruction book. So I can go, but I can go through, because it's essentially a bunch of plates here, every, go through each level of plates, and if I'm adding new blocks at any one level, I'll just can throw in a step marker that ends up looking a bit like this. And this works in, there's three or four kind of major Lego CAD Software out there, they all read this format, which is very convenient. The first column is the command, 
which in this case, a one is a block, a zero is a meta command for where if it steps in, there's eight or 10 different commands. These are the only two that were interesting for, for what I was doing. The color of the block, where it's going to be, transformations in here because at some point somebody might want to stretch a Lego block or twist it in space and do a lot of things that physics don't really allow, but the CAD program does. <laughs> and then at the end, it's what part number. So 3005 is a brick and 3024 is a plate. If any of you saw a Lego movie, the master builders at some points, we would see little parts flash up and the numbers would show up. It's the same numbers. <laughs> uh, and if you watch the Lego movie enough, you can get them all memorized and then use them here. <laughs> uh, and all this was, was very easy sort of to do in many ways because there's a lot of really cool 3D libraries out there. Uh, I tried Pygame, PyMesh, and a few others. And using libraries is great because other people are doing a lot of your work for you. The problem I had was that a lot of these 3D libraries also tried to do a lot of general work. So they would, if I wanted to display the 3D object or, or do a lot of other manipulations that people might do either in a game or, or in any other point with an object. For that, then it was putting a million Lego blocks of these little things into memory along with my lotus flower to com computing all of those collisions. And my first, well, this wasn't the lotus flower, but for my test Lego pirate, took about four hours to, to compute all those collisions, which really isn't that bad for a custom Lego set of instructions for Cool Pirate. But I decided to open up the, the OBJ file that had the, the part in there, which embarrassingly up until this point I had not and would assume it was binary. But it's just a bunch of text. Uh, in fact, it's just all a bunch of vertices for triangles that we heard about yesterday. So now that I had a bunch of text, vertices I can read as an array, and a bunch of Lego plates we can read as an array, I was able to rewrite the collision detection. So instead of actually creating a bunch of objects in space, just using a bunch of math. Uh, I'm not super great at math, but a lot of de game developers have had the same struggle trying to get collisions between objects. And so game dev had a lot of algorithms and sped this, this process up. So my four hour Lego pirate became three minutes and 21 seconds to, to render the whole thing. And ultimately, I like this Lego pirate for a test because you can also see the color matching kind of fail in a few spots. Uh, you can see the little buttons on his vest start to turn yellow. You can even see a belt buckle in there, but the belt disappears. Um, so I like, it kind of shows me my edge of where my color detection works. Not actually building this, it's easier to fix those just with the actual parts in hand. But it lets me kind of see the end of other things. Um, I did want to bring something to kind of show also in person what that can do. I had to fit on an airplane, so I had to be a little bit smaller. But um, I have some scans of various Lego parts, and this was one of them <laughs> that I scaled up to be human size. <laughs> That's all I have. <laughs>